All right. Now, <laughs> brought to you by Butcher Box. How about Baldy and the Meat? Baldy, Baldy. Let's talk some football. Ay, 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 Baldy, Baldy. Oh, he likes meats and football. Oh, Baldy. All right, poolside premonition. Let's start. <laughs> what an amazing light, night last night. But I got to start. Uh, Baldy put a tweet out, and he's in the pool, right? And he goes, poolside premonition. The Atlanta Falcons are thinking about a quarterback. And lo and behold, the the biggest piece of the draft last night in that puzzle yeah. was the Falcons taking our boy, Michael Panix Baldy. Yeah, you know, in fact, the, the tweet actually said that they were thinking about taking Michael Penix Jr. And I know people are confused, like, why do you give Kirk Cousins all this money, all this guaranteed money? Kirk Cousins is probably confused by it. But Arthur Blank is sitting there going, you know, Kirk Cousins is going to have some success here, and he's going to have a chance for it. We got a new coach in Raheem Morris. But I want to dominate this division for the next 10 years, the way Mahomes is dominating. I'm not comparing him to Patrick Mahomes. But Kansas City has dominated their division for eight straight years because, in large part, look, Andy Spags, the best quarterback in the league. They, they think they got the best quarterback in the draft. And Arthur Blank – had great success with Matt Ryan. They won a lot of division titles. They went to a Super Bowl. They were the premier team in the South for a long time with Matt Ryan. And, you know, well, and I feel like they think Michael Penix can learn from Kirk Cousins for a year. But look, if if anything happens to Kirk, I mean, you know, he tore his Achilles last year. They feel like they got the guy ready to go. And I feel like Raheem Morris, a young coach, you know, um, Arthur Blank, Michael Penix Jr., let's put this thing together for the next decade. Yeah, I, and we love it. You know, his arm is ridiculous. You know, mm-hmm. we were on him early. Um, so I, I – well, Ultimately, because ultimately not only were we on it, but you have to win from the pocket in this league. That's where you win. I mean, you could be some of these guys that are flashy and run for a lot of yards. I mean, ultimately, Mahomes still wins from the pocket. He, he creates – he extends plays. He does a lot of stuff. But that's what Michael Penix had did for two years at Washington at his time in Indiana. He elevated the Indiana program to number seven in the country until he got hurt. He elevated the Washington program all the way to the final you know, national championship game. He elevates programs, and he wins from the pocket. And I think that's why he was my second favorite quarterback in this draft. We'll see what time does and how it plays out. But I think the Falcons you know, made a good move. All right, let's skip around. Um, I know you got a busy day ahead of you. Uh, you're going to be on the NFL Network all weekend long. I mean, you know, it, it, this is baldy time. Yeah. Let, let's go right to the Eagles because, yeah. I, I mean, the, the board plays out perfectly for Howie. He doesn't have to move, and he's got the top corner, a true CB1 in yeah. his lap. No, no, it's unbelievable how it fell. In fact, Micah Parsons tweeted it out. How does how how does like you know how does Howie Roseman do this? You know the Georgia guys fell last year. Jalen Carter fell into him. You know I think with the ninth pick. But yeah, I mean people thought that Indianapolis, Jacksonville, all these teams could take corners. And maybe if the Eagles wanted either Quinion Mitchell or Terry and Arnold, they're going to have to move together. They'd have to move. And and really Quinion, it, it was a battle between Quinion and Terry who's the number one corner in the whole draft. But, you know, Quinion could have easily, you know, he he had some issues coming out of high school. Um, That's why he wasn't at a big D1 program. But then he proved himself at at Toledo, and he could have gotten the transfer portal. He could have gone to Florida. He could have gone to all these SEC schools. Nick Saban said uh, that he was waiting. He was his number one prospect. He was waiting for – him to enter the portal, and he never did. No, because Toledo was so loyal to him. So he yeah. said, I'm going to give my loyalty to Toledo. And, you know, he 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 had the best times and measurements of any corner in this draft. I mean, he ran a 4-3-3. But 
That's one thing. That's Indianapolis. But when you watch the tape, cuz, his ability to break on a ball, like he had over 40 passes defense in the last two years. His ability to like close the gap, zone coverage, man coverage, play the ball in the air. He has all the skills that you're looking for. A tall, long corner, an, an incredibly lightning fast that can play the ball in the air. Oh, by the way, now he doesn't play the ball in the air. He didn't have a single penalty. He didn't like not one of those defensive passes, like he got there too soon. Right. Like his ability to time it, no penalties, led the country in pass passes defense two years in a row. Um, he he's he was an elite prospect. Well, when you compare and contrast Arnold, how do you, uh, in your mind, how do you come up Mitchell? Because I, I agree with it, too. I, I love Mitchell. Well, the only thing is, you know, Terry, I, I, I thought going into last year that McKinstry, Kool-Aid, was the number one corner. Right. And, and, you know, because of his size and how he played. But really, Terry and Arnold, like, you, you watch him against Texas and taking down Xavier Worthy, where if he doesn't make the tackle, he's he's dancing in the end zone. His ability to tackle – Play every scenario, every situation, whether it's bubble screens with you know run defenders in front of you. You got to defeat the block, make the tackle. Whether it's playing the ball down the uh, down the field, whether it's getting beat down the field and coming right back and making a great play. Um, you see all of the things that you need to be a number one corner corner in Terrion. And he's but, a converted safety, so he's better tackler. Well, That's uh, better Mitchell's right. weakness, which is. Kind of tackling. Yeah, I don't know if it's a weakness. Um, I, I just think that or run support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, but I, I that those things can show up sometimes. But Arnold, Arnold had. That's why he rose this year. Um, his, his overall play in the SEC, just a higher level of competition, sure. week in week out. You know, seeing the LSU receivers, seeing Ricky Pearsall, at Florida. You know, just seeing the guys you see. All the guys have, you know, so I think just the level of competition week in, week out. So let, let's go back. What shaped this? What shaped this was the run on all offensive players that nobody was looking. Great. It's incredible, right? Like, you know, the six quarterbacks in the first 12 picks. It's unbelievable that, the, you know, Denver going with Bo Nix. Like, there was a desperation clearly when it came to the quarterbacks. It was desperation. Desperation. And then, you know, like uh, even right after Denver, the Raiders needed, you know, they needed help too. They go Brock Bowers. They just drafted Michael Mayer the year before. So now they've got two tight ends that they got to figure out. <clears throat> so that was a little bit of a, a head scratcher. But yeah, I mean, it was 14 straight offensive players. And, you know, Indianapolis took what I said, um, you know, during this whole process that Latu, Latu was the best defensive player in this draft. And he's the first defensive player taken. Um, he's, you know, you put lot two next, you know, on that defensive front right now, like that's going to be a problem for a lot of teams. Yeah, I, I loved, I mean, look at the value the Rams got with Verse. Yeah. I mean, wow. I mean, well, that's they had a first round <laughs> picks in 2016 when they took Jared Goff. So Aaron Donald just retires. They struck gold in the third round last year with Kobe Turner in, in, uh, and, and Byron uh, Young, uh, both of those guys, to combined, they had 17 sacks. But they really developed. They needed it in. Those guys can play inside, really. Kobe Turner is, is going to be the replacement for Aaron Donald. Um, Byron Young is outside. Now they got Jared Verse outside. They're putting this defense back together, you know. And so uh, they will be highly competitive, and he's going to have a real chance in a, in a really uh, interesting defense, um, you know, now that, you know, Brandon Staley's back coaching the defense. So, you know, I think they're in, they're in good shape right now with what they did. All right, so let's start at the top. So uh, the Bears obviously went Caleb Williams, as we all expected. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Daniels goes, which we expected Washington. There was that – they were floating out the J.J. at two, which we didn't understand. Plays out the way we thought it would. Daniels clearly the number two. May, like we thought, New England goes three. Then Marvin goes to Arizona. No trade out for for Arizona well, or the Chargers. Yeah, no. So really, when you look at uh, Arizona, they had six of the first ninety picks. Like th th to gain, they're not going to be able to use all the picks that they have. 
Right. But you have six in the first 90. You don't need extra picks. You you might look for next year, but this is a team that has to build now. So go get go get Kyler Murray, the you know, arguably the best receiver in this draft. They needed an next receiver. Uh ever since DeAndre Hopkins left, there was a big void out there. They tried to fill it with Hollywood Brown. He's not he's not an X like that. So go get yourself a big X that's gonna get, you know, 120 targets minimum. You know, you've you got Trey McBride who really exploded as tight end last year. You know, you, you're starting to build this thing piece by piece. That made a lot of sense to me. Yeah, I I, uh, I, I completely agree. And then uh, Harbaugh goes like the, how Harbaugh does. Like, we're going to fortify that front, and you get and they go alt. Well, that's and- just that. But, you know, he recruited Joe Alt hard when he was at Michigan. And he turned him down to go to Notre Dame. But, you know, he's been inside – John Alt's house, his father's house. You know, John played with my brother in Kansas City. His father played with my brother in Kansas City. His other brother played for the Flyers. You know, and so this is a family of athletes. I saw his dad sitting down last night. Um, I've known John a long, long time since he was a, a rookie in 1984. Wow. Um, John's a technician. He's, you know, you just, he's Jonathan Ogden's size. Yeah. And like anybody that thought that he could just play left tackle, he's an athlete. You, you know, if they want him to play at right tackle, Rashawn Slater at left tackle. I mean, Harbaugh is putting this thing together. They're going to run the ball. They're going to protect their quarterback. They're going to find receivers. You know, they're going to find new running backs. But they've got the fortification up front right now. So this is where I, I was fascinated because this is one of the crossroads of the draft. The Giants at six. Now, yeah. Do they go with McCarthy? JJ's on the board. Do they take McCarthy or Penix, right? Uh, who's still there? And they opt to go Malik Neighbors, uh, who we love, great receiver out of LSU, which says we want to stick with Daniel Jones. Were you surprised that they didn't take the quarterback, man? They had the heir apparent in their lap. I was surprised. I really was. And uh, and the owner. Uh, John Mara basically said at the owners meetings this year, about a month ago or so, he said, look, if they feel that a quarterback is the best player on the board, if he's, if they feel like he's the best player when we pick, then I'm giving them my blessing, the green light to go take him." And so I thought when I heard that from the owner who doesn't say those kind of things, but he basically said to Joe Shane and Brian Dable, if you think quarterback's the best player, then go get him." And so Maybe they just didn't value uh, J.J. McCarthy like they did Malik Neighbors, and they're going to build around Daniel Jones and um, and see what see what happens right now and and ride that wave. But Malik Neighbors is a dynamic player. Uh, they got a really really good uh, you know look. They haven't had a great player at that position since Odell's early years in New York. They're going to have that chance right now. They they added pieces on the offense line and free agency. Uh, it looks like either Daniel Jones or Drew Locke, who they signed uh, from Seattle, that they're going to go with those two quarterbacks right now. Yeah, I, that was puzzling. I love neighbors, but the chance to get the quarterback there, and, and it could have been Penix, uh, you know, throw who could cut I, it through the the, the yeah, North yeah, Jersey no wind. wind. I, I'll be honest with you, because I wasn't the biggest J.J. McCarthy fan, and then I interviewed him the other day for the NFL Network. Boy, that guy interviews great. Mm. I mean, he is, he's something, when you sit down and you talk to him, yeah, like you see why people were really excited uh, by the possibility of having him coming into your team. He, like he, 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 he wins you over pretty quickly. I had a GM tell me um, that, that, you know, one of the reasons why all the talk with JJ was you, you just love him. Like you fall in love, like you're in the room with him. Uh, he wins you over. Like, yeah. you know, so that, I see that. That 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 fits. So in a, one of our meat locker uh, mock drafts, you had Latham going to Tennessee. All right. Of course, yeah. poolside premonition uh, to get to Michael Penix, like we discussed. Then the Bears, and you had this in one of our meat locker drafts. Rome, I love this pick for Chicago, where you uh you added a young receiver to go with your young quarter franchise quarterback. You already got some veterans there, and we love Roma Dunzia. So it's you know it, it it was almost fate. Uh, it just so happened that Caleb Williams and Roma Dunze were on the same flight from Los Angeles to Detroit two days ago, and anybody that meets Roma Dunze, 
they fall in love with the guy. He's just entertaining. He's super smart. He's just a guy. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to fly the plane, make sure that Caleb gets to Detroit on time for his, you know, his uh, coronation to the Chicago Bears. Like, that's going to be a fantastic duo for a long time to come. Like, I, I don't know the last time Chicago has had a quarterback, wide receiver potential the way those two guys do. Look, if Roma Dunze was there, I was in the New York Jets all night last night. If Roma Dunze was there at 10, they were taking a Dunze. And, you know, you can't – they had a plan. Like, Olu was there, they were taking Olu. Um, and if a Dunze was gone. So, they felt good. They traded back a pick. They traded back a pick, got himself a fourth-round pick, you know, took uh, Olu at, at 11 and allowed Minnesota to go up there and get McCarthy. And that was key, right? Like, I was surprised that the uh, Broncos or the – now, the Broncos don't have a lot of ammo, right? So, they were kind of stuck. Uh, and the Raiders I, – I, I thought, like, if you're the Raiders, maybe you make the play to kind of get up. I guess they, they like panics over J.J. in that sense. Well, we, well, we don't know because, you know, they didn't right. make a move. But they – you know, I think – a lot of people were shocked, and maybe the Raiders were too, that Penix went eight to Atlanta. Yes. Um, and so maybe that guy was off the board and that all they did was just Tom Telesco, the new general manager, said, you know, they – I didn't – I don't feel like the Raiders th- felt like they needed to jump up to seven with Tennessee uh, in order to get Penix. I felt like they probably thought um, – Definitely. That Penix – that Bo Nix was, was – uh, you know, Sean Payton's guy, and that they, they, they could sit there and wait on Penix to fall to him. Because I thought he would go between 8 and 13, and the Raiders would take him if he was there. And they didn't pull the, the trigger to go high enough to, you know, to get to get the, the quarterback. And then uh, I, I love how it kind of plays out. with Saints, Fuaga is a terrific pick for New Orleans. Uh, well, look, they just fired. They fired Doug Marone, the offensive line coach. They fired their offensive staff. Trevor Penning did not work out. Ryan Ramchick might never play again at right tackle. They needed an offensive tackle. And so they got Fuaga, who's – he could play right tackle. He was a star at Oregon State. He probably could play left tackle. Depends on where they want to play him. They probably give Penning another year at left tackle, play Fuaga at right tackle to start with, and go from there. Yeah, I, I and you talked about Liatu Latu, um, who uh, – I mean, man, I, draft. I, and so I, I think – Indianapolis could have taken a corner right there. Yeah. But with Lockheed sitting there, um, you know, DeForest Buckner will play next to him. You got two Polynesians right there. Like, it made a lot of sense. And then as you uh, go on, uh, Brian Thomas, who I, I think is one of the sleep, like sleeper value picks, he's the fourth receiver, but a stud opposite neighbors at LSU. And Jacksonville – who could use some outside help? Uh, I mean, I you love that pick. I love the pick. Uh, look, it's about supporting Trevor Lawrence. I mean, they lose Calvin Ridley. <clears throat> so, you know, they, they need to give him as much help as they possibly can. And so they got an explosive big X receiver uh, to take Ridley's place, who was a one-year player. Um, you know, and then you just keep you keep building around your quarterback, and that's all that is. And then I love what Detroit did. Talk about the the Lions and how you know how smart that that front office man, terrific. They spy Arnold. What value to trade up, uh, host of the draft in Detroit, trade up and get your corner. We know how badly they needed secondary help. Well, they went and get the second best corner. They got their best corner. They went and got Terry and Arnold. And so you know it's arguably with what the Eagles did at twenty two. Um, you know, with Quinion, but they were the two best corners in the draft. And so it was a position of need. You look at what they've done with Hutch and with Campbell and with Brian Branch last year. Like, they're building a, a championship-level defense right now. And then uh, it's interesting. Let's look at the Cowboys for a second because I thought they kind of got uh, screwed when Tampa goes Barton because you love Barton. But they come back and get Guyton – to play the tackle spot, that's a good that's a good pick for them. Yeah, it's a good pick. I mean, they they drafted Tyler Smith. He'll be the left guard. Tyler Guyton will be the left tackle. Who knows? Maybe they take Zach Frazier at center. You know, trade up and get you know uh, an elite center that's going to go off the board real early, 
sometime today, cuz, uh, and get to center. Like it won't surprise me to see them try find some way to get Zach Frazier and really put that line back together. All right. So the birds, two picks today. Um, look at some of the prospects that are there. Uh, Jaden Hicks uh, from Washington State safety. You might want to look at uh, Blake Fisher. I mean, I don't know if he's going to be there. Uh, it's a guy that I know you like if mm-hmm. you want some old line help, right? Yeah. But, but give, give me some names that Eagle uh, fans. Cooper Beebe, Cooper Beebe out of Kansas State. You know, they got 50 and 53. So Cooper Beebe could be there at 50. He might go a little bit earlier. Um, that'd be a guy that they, they would certainly target, you know, at this position right now. Um, you know, I think that uh, when you look at a guy like, say, um, uh, Marshawn Nealand, you know, is a guy from Central Michigan, a, a defensive end. Muhammad Kamara, a defensive end. All those guys have value, uh, you know, as a pass rusher right now. I don't think they're out of the out of the woods with that right now. But there are some some really good safeties right now. USC has a really good safety, so I think some of those guys could certainly show up right now. Do Do you like any of the linebackers like Peyton Wilson? Yeah. From Carolina, you got well, Junior Colson from he, he, Michigan. Peyton Wilson is Peyton Wilson is a first round pick. Yeah, that had he's he's tore his ACL twice, tore it in high school once, tore it in North Carolina State. He's had shoulder surgery, but he is in an elite. He's a top twenty player in this draft. Yeah, I, so I really like, thought. Yeah, so like Edrick Cooper at Texas A and M. If if you want to go second round linebacker, Peyton Wilson, Edrick Cooper. Look, if you want to look at Trot, you know, like in the third round. Like he's a guy that I don't think I don't think you would take him at fifty or fifty three, but he's got real. He plays really hard. He's got playmaking ability. He's he's not as big as his dad, but you know he he strikes you. He does a lot of things. He rushes the passer. Um, like he's a guy that could be in play. Is, is there a uh, a prospect that you're looking at that could slide in a guard? Uh, and then later potentially put, kick back out to tackle. Like I look at some of the tackles. I don't think Rosengarten is that guy that can play guard to tackle out of Washington. Is there anybody that you like um, that could fit that kind of bill? Yeah, I mean, I think that you you look at a guy, say like um, you, you could go Kieran Armageji from Yale. Uh, he was the left tackle at Yale, tested really well. The, the Eagles brought him in. They've looked at him. Um, he's a guy that can play guard. Uh, he's got enormous, you know, length. He's got 36-inch arms on a 6'5-plus frame. Um, you know, but he also, you know, he moves really well. He, um, you know, he, like he's a guy at 325 pounds. It could be 335 pounds. He could play guard, and he could play tackle. He's a left tackle at Yale. Like that's a guy that could do it. Amarius Mims is out there. Like just an enormous freak um, that, that could probably do both. Uh, Javon Foster from Missouri is a guy that sort of fits that bill of what you're talking about, Cuz. Uh, who who's your favorite day two? Give me like two or three favorite day two prospects that'll. Well, Lad McConkey at wide receiver yeah. is a guy that you know is going to be a, a, a really great player. Um, Amarius Mims is down the road might become the best tackle in this whole draft. He has that type of size and potential. So I think, you know, that that's a guy. Um, I love Peyton Wilson. Uh, you know, that guy yeah. just smacks you. But Edrick yeah. Cooper, too, both those guys are really good players. Um, Chris Jenkins, you know, from the University of Michigan, his father was a great player in this league, is a guy that's uh, really, really interesting uh, to me. And then I think that you know, when you look at a guy like Chris Braswell at Alabama, like that guy tested really, really good as an outside linebacker, pass rusher. Like that guy's still on the board right now. Uh, Cedric Gray at North Carolina is an off the ball inside linebacker who's a really, really good player. That's, uh, you know, he's going to go in the second round, maybe the third round. Um, yeah, Car- Carolina well, had a good defense. If you remember, Especially two years ago when they had that run, they, yeah. I mean, they, I mean that was a good team. I, I, I'm with you on that. Tyler Newbin from Minnesota, uh, safety, like he had 14 career interceptions. Like he was the number one safety on my board. Like he's still out there. Cameron Kitchens, we knew no safeties were going to go. 
but Cameron Kitchens at Miami. Um, you mentioned Jaden Hicks. K- Kalen Bullock from USC is a is a really fantastic player. Like I can see a bunch of these. I see two or three safeties going to the second round today. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be awesome. All right, I know you got a busy day. All right, so get on that flight. Get yeah. on out to uh, Los Angeles NFL Network. We'll be watching you all weekend long, and then we'll talk to you next week, brother. Let's catch up next week. Let's review this whole thing. Let's see how the Eagles did, what they do. Two big picks here. I can see uh, Howie, um, you know, even trading up today to go get one of these marquee players that fell, that probably had a first-round grade and, you know, slipped into the second round. I, you got two. You got ammo there, man. So I, yeah, you, yeah. Can to- you can totally see it. Brother, yeah. great stuff as always. The great yeah. Baldy. Thanks, guys. Hey. Appreciate you, man. Meat Knocker! That's right. Brought to you by Butcher Box.